Okay, so are you in a relationship currently? <sighs> no, actually. You're, you're single? Yeah. Look at me. Is it when? <laughs> ah, they are husbands here now. If it's today now, on this, this video now, you're going to get a husband. Here, 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 here. Your brothers are all over the world. They are looking at you. Oh, okay. And they are going to marry you today. Hello guys, we are back again with another video. I hope you all are doing amazing. If you're new here, hi. My name is Lillian and I hope you are subscribed to the channel. If you have not, do so by hitting the subscription button and do it to like the video. In today's video, I have amazing, I have another pretty ninja, ganja. Is it ganja? Like, okay. <laughs> So in today's video, I have this beautiful girl in the building and she is going to introduce herself. Tell us about you. Hey guys, I'm Koko Sano. I'm Ghanaian Nigerian. I'm currently based in Ghana. So I'm from Krobo and Igbo. My mom is Nigerian, my dad is Ghanaian. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Someone will be like, yes, that's our sister, right? Yeah, yeah Teko, um, I've had Teko here on the channel before and she even talked about you. Mm. And it's so nice to meet you. Thank you. So how long have you been living in Ghana? Since, uh, since when did you move to Ghana? I moved to Ghana three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Prior to then, I was in Nigeria. Like I schooled in Nigeria all through. So when I was done with university, I decided to move to Ghana. Yeah. So what informed that decision? What, what happened? Why did you um, move to Ghana? Why? It was not a decision I made on my own. Okay. My sister had just given birth and I decided to visit. Okay. Yeah, but from there, I networked, got a job, and then decided to stay. Yeah. So it's not like, okay, I'm going home to my dad. No. Okay. Yeah, I came so. here, I met a lot of people. I decided to come and then work for a little bit. Mm. So I got like a small job. I was just out of school. Mm. Yeah. But I met a lot of people that wanted to give me jobs. And it was like easy peasy. I'm like, why not? Yeah. You know, rather than go back home and struggle. Yeah, search and, for yeah. a job in Nigeria. Yeah, so I just settled. Um, so, um, you've been home before, when I was ever, there. ever in your life? Yes, yes, definitely. When I was little. Okay. Oh, right now, mm -mm. Why? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> your place is very beautiful. It is, but I don't even know my way there, if I'm okay. honest. Okay, really? No, I don't. Tiago have not taken you home to like, let's go home. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get her to do that, okay? <laughs> yes, you guys should visit. To. Yeah, you guys go yeah, home. It's good to. too. For me, I wish I'm, I have a place near, like I wish I have a home like you guys in Ghana. I would have been going home. But the thing uh, is, most frequent. of our relatives are from, like they live in Accra. Okay. Here. So I think that's why we've not really gone back out. my uncle stays in Obujo. so but are you guys um in touch like you get to meet you get to discuss you visit them or something i don't mm, this is your microphone yeah i don't have like a personal relationship with them okay but i don't also have a problem with them they're very cool my sister is cool with them but mm, i don't know i feel like i'm more connected to my nigerian side maybe because i grew there like i stayed there and I grew up all my life there. So I'm more connected to my mother's side, this place here. But I get to hear from them once in a while. Okay. And they're really, really sweet people. Yeah, I understand that your dad passed on to glory. May his soul rest in peace. Did you get to have like a relationship with your dad before he passed? I was seven when he passed. I was really little. So the memories I have of my dad are still very vague. You know, like him taking me to school or me sleeping on his chest, oh. you know, those, yeah, those are like the little, little things I remember. But for the most part of my life, I would say no, because I was really, really young when he passed. How so old were you? Oh, how I was, old were you? I was seven. Oh. Yeah, I was seven. So thinking of it, I would say I grew up with my mom, mm. just my mom, because I really don't, when I became a teenager and all of that, yeah, there was no... You know, it was dad just my, yeah. It was not that around. It was just my mom. But then the little time you had with him, how was it? Like, if you could make something of it, like, how was it? What kind of a dad was your dad? He was a sweet dad. I felt like he was the little from the very little memories I have of him. My dad cooked in the house. Mm. Yeah, like it was. It wasn't something that was common then. Mm. But yeah, mm. but for husband. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. When he cooked, he took me to school, did my assignments with me. You know, my mom was really busy. She's a nurse, so she was really, really busy. So he did. He didn't mind doing 
something yeah yeah he didn't and mind. that drew you guys so close to him yeah so close to him so close and then i remember growing up i had a brother mm. and because of the way my dad was when he grew up he started cooking you know in the house at some point he cooked like very good you know and that's because of the things he, he saw yeah he learned, from, he learned dad. from my dad yeah which was really sweet so i'll say generally he was a very nice man so when you were, you, when you were young like you and Tieko, Tieko said that you guys came to or ghana you came to ghana right mm -hmm. uh for the depot uh -huh. so you came for the depot yeah. festival. you did that i did that but was your dad around then no he had died oh, okay so my dad had wanted it before my before he passed on mm. so my mom was like okay since my husband really wanted this you guys will have to go so one of like an uncle of ours took us to ghana my mom didn't come with us okay so it was just us and the uncle but yeah i was really young like my sister was a teenager but i was really really young then you know so it was a whole lot i, I think i remember a bit of what happened but it was a whole lot very interesting tradition i must say very interesting and we saw quite a number of white people mm. or would i say mixed people mm. yeah that came back for it and it was it was really interesting welcome to ghana thank you so when you came back to ghana after then after the depo um festival you guys went festival rather you guys went back to nigeria and then um you came to visit you came to help your sister out because she mm -hmm. gave birth and then you just like okay let me just stay back and all that so coming that period did you did you at any point struggle when you came to ghana with your you know you, you once people sees you and they hear you talk yeah they can tell you nigerian you will have to explain and you have to explain to them you know about your Ghanaian roots and all that did that at any point um in time affected your did it affect you in any ways it did in the work setting okay yeah the work setting it did because when i came in Mm. I got a job in a restaurant. Okay. It wasn't the plan. I I was supposed to go back for my national service in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but I got a job in a restaurant as a supervisor, right? And when you're placed in a position where these people from your accent mm. feel like you're Nigerian, they have this withdrawal, right? Especially with customers and then uh, the people you have to like control in the kitchen and mm. then, you know, they report to you, but they feel like, it took them time for them to understand the kind of person I am. And then a lot of them didn't even believe I was Ghanaian. They're like, a lot of Nigerians come and just speak Ghanaian names and yeah. feel like, yeah. So there was this incident that happened where there was a customer mm -hmm. that came in. He had an issue. You know, it's a restaurant setting. He mm. had an issue. One of them called me, like a waiter called me. Oh, this man has this issue. You have to come and help us attend to him. So I came. I was speaking Ga. Mm. Da, 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 da. I, I do understand Ga. And so, there you are. There you are with a Ghanaian name. Yeah, but with a Ghanaian name and a Nigerian accent, I didn't. <laughs> you know. And then I came and I'm like, he's like, "What's your name?" I'm like, "My name is Koko." Mm. You know. Then he started speaking Ga. I'm like, I, I really don't understand. You know, if you can just at least switch to English so mm. I can help you out. Then he told me, "Get out of it." He was so rude, mm. so rude. That's how you Nigerians come to Ghana and act like you get, you spoil the system, you do this, you do that. Get me somebody else. I don't want to talk to this lady. It was so, I was so embarrassed, you know. And you know the funny thing? When, at the end of the day, when he had calmed down, he called me and I found out that he was a Nigerian. He was a Nigerian that grew up in Ghana all his life. He could speak Ewe, Ga, Chi. He had blended in so well. I was like, oh my God. It was so shocking. I didn't even know how to react. I'm shocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know how to react. You would, you would think he's, he's, he's claiming Ga. You would think he's a Ga man. Like, he's claiming, I don't know the person. And him be saying things like, this is how you guys come to spoil the system. He's and been then, in Ghana for over 40 years. Does he have any connection, like, no, his blood -wise? mother, His mother and father are Nigerians. But he came down to Ghana, got married to Ghanaian, blended in so well. The system. So right now he identifies as a Ghanaian. <laughs> and no, yeah, fine. I'm happy for him. But what is this judgment he passed exactly. on you? Exactly. Because that is who he is. He is feeling, don't you think he feels guilty? I think so too. He feels uh, yeah, guilty, so. right? Because he called me and he was like, 
for impersonating. Yeah, he called me, and the reason he called me was for for me to tell him the truth. Oh, you tell see, me. See, who that wants was to know the truth. That was when he opened up. That's okay, me. Um, he's a Yoruba guy, and I'm like, really, really, you gave me the worst embarrassment of my life in front of my staff, and you are telling me you are Nigerian after all of these things. It was it was really embarrassing. I don't think a Ghanaian can do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think a Ghanaian can do that. Maybe. Maybe they are, but I... It won't be as aggressive as this man was. Hmm. Even if a Ghanaian did it, he was... No, he was, he was very, very rude. Very rude. So sorry to hear. But you know, the comforting part of the story for me is the fact that he is the thief who accused you of being exactly. a thief. Exactly. <laughs> he stole from you. You're Ghanaian. He's not. <laughs> Did he, you know, you know, explain to him what did he now say at the end of the day? What did the man say apart from apologizing to you? Apart from apologizing for sinning against you and even stealing your identity. He was like, I would highly advise that you learn one of the languages well because I have an accent and it's not Ghanaian, right? So I highly advise you learn one of the languages well and blend in so that people will not take you for granted. He started giving me a whole ton of advice as to how he was able to learn the languages and all of that. So I think he faced the same discrimination when he came, right? So he was forced to blend in. Now he's acting like all Nigerians are... Mm, yeah. Like him. All Nigerians yeah. are like him. Exactly. Apart from that, have there been any time... Do you have your Ghana card? Yeah, your, I do. You have your voter's card? Yeah. No, I've not gotten my voter's card, but I have my Ghana card. I have a passport. Okay, so when you wanted to go for this how did it go oh it was seamless it was very easy i had to put give a reference okay my sister was one but she had done hers already mm. so it was easy but aside from that i had to call like a cousin of mine okay from my dad's side yeah so he just that was just it on the phone yeah yeah and then he just like explained i had to them. bring like certain documents okay but before that i had to no when i got there they mm. requested that i call somebody because they were like okay what if you're just calling somebody and it's mm. not he's not related to you yeah. but it was really easy because for some reason they didn't give me troubles i think they know what to, like i have been to the um the card office mm -hmm. not the passport office mm -hmm. but i think from the people i saw there are, are doing are doing amazing yeah they are it's, it's not easy for someone to just come and impersonate and get it yeah. easy True. that's a good thing True. are you still on the same job or you oh i've moved to... i've transitioned yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, getting subsequent job how easy was it for you as I, a nigerian <laughs> with a Ghanaian name no apparently it was easy i think that was the only bad experience i had because moving up you get to meet a lot of enlightened people that understand these things people marry from different races and cultures right so it wasn't really a big deal mm -hmm. but i struggled coming here because, you know, in Nigeria, we're very fast-paced. Mm. You know, everybody's on the run, yeah. everybody here. So coming here, I'm working in a professional setting. Mm. I felt like, why are Ghanaians so slow? Yeah. You know, it was a struggle for me because I wanted things to be done fast. And, mm. you know, so I had to adjust to that. I had to understand that, oh, it's not, mm. life is not like that. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was it. But aside from that, everything was good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the very first time, you, you know, you just came to assist your sister to visit, to get to see the baby and all that, and you came here. What was that? What impression did you have about Ghana when you got here the very first time? It was Minus the fact that you're Ghanaian, yeah, whether fine or not, it's your country. But was it what you expected? Because the last time you came, you were quite young. Mm -hmm. You may have forgotten what you saw then, sure. right? Mm -hmm. So when you came back, how was it? How did you react to it? How was the environment for you? It was cool. Now, coming from the eastern part of Nigeria, because I schooled in the east. Oh, okay. Where? Imo states. Oh, really? Yeah, Futo. So, okay. Coming from there, we had this whole we have Biafra saga thing going mm, on. So, when mm. I came, the first impression was, oh, it's really peaceful here, you know? Because back then, you have to be careful. There were, there were lockdowns on Mondays. You can be in your room, you hear gunshots. It was a lot. And if, as a student, it was, it was, oh, it was a lot. So, coming straight from school to my sister's house, I felt it was peaceful. I could take a walk without feeling like we're supposed to be on lockdown or inside your house. There are mm. restrictions and all of that. Yeah, yeah, so that was like the very first thing I felt when I came to Ghana. Yeah. So you're welcome back to Ghana. I mean, welcome Thank back you. home. 
Mm. So do you intend to settle here permanently, like for good? Yeah. Well, except except I get married and <laughs> Husband's here now. If it's day now, this this video now, you're going to get your husband here, 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 here. Your brothers are all over the world. They are looking at you. Oh, okay. And they are going to marry you today, so you're not leaving Ghana. In, in case you're thinking of it, personally, I don't want her to go back to Nigeria. Oh, mm? well, I don't yeah. think I would. Just to visit your mom. You know, I know oh, your mom, right? I told you. Yeah, yeah. You told yeah, me. Met your you told mom. me. And she's amazing. She was so nice, so sweet, and beautiful. I think you look more like your mom yeah, than yeah, yeah. yeah my so wife. who looks like your dad among you Deco. right yeah she looks like my dad wow <laughs> your dad was light-skinned and... yeah he was but not i don't think he was as light-skinned as my sister mm. but she looks more like him the cheeks everything is my dad mm. <laughs> okay yeah. so now now that you've been here i mean you've been here for uh three years yeah have you been able to learn the language a no. little Okay, a little, yes. I Which know, of like, them, the, the Ga Adangbe. You know, she, are you um, under the Ga Adangbe? Yeah, I think so. So which one are you speaking now? Chi. Because like, I'm uh, in Accra, and then it's just the basics. Mm, the basics. Like, like when you go to that. the market. Yeah. Oh, saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those really? little things, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the basics, that's it. So um at some point you may have wanted to rent have you rented before yes i have i still rent okay so how was it or oh, your sister did the run for you the... no i actually did it myself uh -huh. but... and, and there you were with your thick nigerian accent how did i, I you had work? to i was working in i had to go with a colleague of mine okay right so he had to stand in like oh i know this girl she's not she's not um because landlords will tell you they are very specific. There are certain types of, especially in certain areas, there are certain mm. Nigerians they don't want okay. to trouble someone. But they are peaceful Nigerians too. But they want to know that somebody can vouch for you that you are okay. not problematic, right? Okay. So yeah, I went with a colleague of mine mm. and it was, that was it. So I've so been renting ever you, since. Okay, so you, you've never had issues of they saying, oh, we can't rent to you because you're not... Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No, I have. So uh, have there been any time your name work in your favor? Like maybe you got an opportunity just because of your name, you know, Koko Sanu. Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody that, knows Koko. It's yeah. a very popular name, mm -hmm. like in Ghana. Yeah, so I don't think... I feel like in situations where they're supposed to question you, mm. the name just... You just mentioned, you know, oh, okay, you're Ghanaian, that's it. Okay. Yeah, it was, there's, there's no discrimination or anything. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's... So how at home do you feel? Do you think you'd have felt better if your dad was to be around or something? I would have felt more at home if he was to be around. Because to a very large extent, I still feel like I am more Nigerian than I'm Ghanaian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I understand the feeling, right? Yeah. I understand. I think um, I applaud your mom. She's she's yeah, amazing. She's a strong woman. Yeah, she's yeah. amazing because some mothers in situations like this, mm -hmm. where your dad is no more, ah, they don't even want to. In fact, maybe wh why do you think your mom encouraged you guys to have your connection with your roots? I mean, to connect with your Ghanaian roots. Do you think because they had a good relationship or because she's just a nice person? No, I think it's because she had a good relationship with my dad. And aside from that, she was also connected to his family. Okay. So I remember as a child, we were coming for holidays, Christmas, summer holidays. We kept coming to Ghana. So I think she formed like a bond with my, my father's people. So maybe that was why. Because if that was not the case, I mm. see no reason why she would have released her children to go for depot mm. with an uncle. Yeah. Without even following them. So yeah, she had like, and then my dad used to have this meeting at home. I remember very well. This I think they call them Nagakon. Mm -hmm. They come to like an association of Ghanaians. They come home and all. So she like really connected with a lot of. Them. Okay. Yeah. So she, she she speaks the language. A no, she doesn't. <laughs> Right now, you, you started a YouTube channel, like I was watching one of the videos the yeah. other day, I'm like, ah, see as she finds, <laughs> see Ghana girl, you look very Ghanaian, like, yeah. I do? Yeah, people don't tell you. No. And there's this uh, YouTuber, you, sorry, there's this YouTuber you look like. Mm. Guess the YouTuber. I don't know. No one have told you before? No. Who? Do you know Diane Kweme? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Do you guys, you guys look I alike? Don't. Come inside the camera, we can see you. <laughs> I don't you know, actually you see it. Really? Mm, you look 
so much alike. You do you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch her content once in a while. It yeah. feels like I'm sitting with her, even the way you talk. All right, so I saw your YouTube video the other day. I decided to watch one and I loved it. Nice, you're doing a good job. So, why did you start your YouTube channel? What happened? Uh, well, I think first off, I'll say it's passion because I really like talking. Okay. Right? So, <laughs> so in the absence of people to talk to, mm. I'll just like. You know, I like reading a lot. I like researching a lot. So most times I want to just call a friend on the phone. I'm like, aha, I learned this today. So we talk about it. But mm -hmm. you know, this is life. Everybody, but so, I really enjoy talking. So I think. So you, you just go and talk to people. Like, that is why you started the channel. Yeah. So what is it all about? Have you figured it out yet? Yeah, basically, it's just, it's just going to be like an educational channel uh, on productivity, self-development, how to navigate life, basically, mm. you know, like with uh, proven e evidences, okay. you know, from researches and books and stuff. Will like you talk that. about your, your culture, like the depot and stuff? Uh, I can try in a little bit of lifestyle there. Okay. <laughs> when, I, when I know that is what people want to see from me. Okay. Yeah. But okay. for now, it's self-development and productivity. Okay. Yeah. So guys, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video. This is your sister, not my sister. <laughs> She's not my sister, okay? <laughs> Please help, let's support her, okay? Let's support her. You have a, a number of videos already. Yeah, I have about three videos. videos. Oh, really? Yeah, three? Yeah. Ah, not be small thing. When did you start? <laughs> uh -uh. I think a week ago. I started a week ago. A week ago? Yeah, I have three videos and I think about four shots. Uh, do you think you can keep up with it? I can. You can, right? Yeah, I can. Oh my goodness. I Guys, can. please support her, okay? I'm going to leave um, her link in the description and also at the comments section, the first comments I'm going to, in case I can't tag you, because sometimes you try to tag somebody, mm -hmm. especially a new channel, <laughs> you to just won't Are let you. you. Okay, enough. so you guys please check out, tell, them, tell, tell your brother, tell your family members. <laughs> Okay, please subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, at Coco Sano. I talk about self-development and productivity. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's a question. If I don't ask you, I feel collect slap. Is it digital slap? <laughs> okay, so are you in a relationship currently? <sighs> no, actually. You're, you're single? Yeah. Look at no. so it, it when I don't oh, I'm not I'm not I'm not looking for <laughs> No, you don't, you don't tell us what to do. You only tell us what what it is. Really? You're single? Yeah, I am. Okay. So a Nigerian guy, a Ghanaian guy, a white guy, who are you open to? Well, I don't think I have a preference. A really a kind and intelligent guy. Hmm. Just Physically. those two qualities. Yeah, no, not just those two, but those he are like very important. Yeah, he has to be very intelligent yeah. and kind too. Okay, but so yeah. you're not the dark, tall, and handsome babe, like, you know. No. Those things matter, but hey. they're not priorities. They're not top priorities. You're so intelligent. <laughs> okay, so he's single. If somebody else are you marketing me? me? No, I'm market. You see, me, I want to. I just want, I want. I don't know why. I feel like she remain in Ghana. I don't know. To make up for everything and the, for the fact that your dad was so good. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a good man. He was a good dad. He was a good husband. Yeah, I feel like he will even be happy if you end up here in Ghana. I mean, settling down well. with one of his brothers, you know. Well. So, what about like, yo, what about your grandmom, your. Patana grandparents, are they alive? No, they're not. They're not? Mm -mm, they're not. Okay. I think they died when I was really... I don't even know if I met... Okay, I met my grandmother, not my grandfather. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's good to take a trip home soon, like, to go We will, because I know my uncle has told us to come, because we have, like, a, some lands in my father's side. So we're supposed to go and take a look and then have the... Like, view it and all, but... I guess I'm waiting for my sister when she's ready. Okay. Yeah. So once she's ready, you will go. Yeah. I think your dad, you guys are from a very good family. Yes. They, they, they kept the land there for yeah, you guys. They did. Amazing. Yeah. I used to have these trust issues when it comes to interrelationship between Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Nigerians and Ghanaians. I don't know why I'm like that. I feel like maybe no matter how amazing it is, there's something there that um, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll 
there's something they will discuss behind you or something well does think, it happen to you yeah but i don't think it has anything i mean your to, family no my family no no my family no but i don't think it has anything to do with the Ghanaians. i think it's a personal thing right some people are just like that yeah okay yeah without being biased what what can, what do you think of Ghanaians as human apart from them being you know you being Ghanaian what do you think about Ghanaians as very kind people I think yeah that's the very first impression they're very kind people but they are also very chill and mm. relaxed and sometimes I don't think that's a good thing they are I think they are slow to yeah so sometimes I don't think that's a good thing especially when it comes to getting things done okay although not all, a lot of them are like that mm. but you see Nigeria <laughs> <laughs> please <laughs> You see, then you can, mm -hmm. when you wake up every morning, you decide, right? You either be the one Today to... like this, I won't, yeah. I won't get 10,000 uh, 10, You decide or die. Exactly. You either be the prey or the predator, one of them. So you're <laughs> either running or somebody is chasing, something has to happen. You know, the, so there's this survival mindset. You always have to be alert. But in Ghana, it's like they're used to the serene environment. Mm. They're used to everything being very chill and you know so sometimes i find it very you struggle yeah yeah yeah. so i think that's what i think of them they're not you know we talked about you feeling at peace the moment you stepped into yeah. ghana do you think this play a role in the peace they have here yes it does a very big okay. role yeah it does actually because it's not um it's a lifestyle mm. you know they're not pretending it's they're used to it. This is how they are. This is how they there's live. No there's no pressure on people yeah. to make it in life. There's no, there's no pressure, really. So basically, you make your choice. You know, nothing is pursuing you. Nothing mm. is, you know, what you want is what you want. So if you want to get something, you go for it. So it's up to you. Okay. Really, yeah. But I feel like when you find the lazy ones, mm. they're really lazy. Because mm. they use the... Yeah, they ju they just use this as an excuse. As an excuse. Lazy. Yeah. Ah, I beg, we are laid back. Exactly. Laid back and lazy. They are not they're, the they're very different. So very it's good different. for people to get it to, yeah, to understand this. Exactly. Okay, so do you think that there's something that you think Nigerians can do to get some peace? I mean, at least a tiny, even if it's like tiny bit of it. I think it should work on the insecurity. There's okay, what do you think can be done to get Nigeria to... They should put measures in place. You know, the youths okay. are agitating for certain things. Mm. You know, like... But you're not speaking, no. Uh -huh. I'm not speaking. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're speaking. Oh, okay. You're speaking like Tieko right now. Oh. Small, small. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, like, right now, I know the youths are, like, agitating for mm -hmm. a lot of things. I feel like the government should put measures in place to make sure the citizens are comfortable to a large extent, okay. you know, so they don't get to go out. I think that's the that's majority of the problem because I feel like you give Nigerians a little and they know what to do with it. They mm. make diamonds out of it. Mm -hmm. So you just have to put certain measures in place that will make them a little bit more comfortable. I think that would be better. Like, okay. that would help a lot with the insecurity. Okay. For me, I think another reason for the insecurity in Nigeria is the fact that the laws don't work. If someone gets unalived, they are no... You know, if the family is not rich, uh, they don't get justice, you know, people get away with so much. I feel like um, that could be another reason why people are still committing crimes in Nigeria. I feel like the laws are not working. What do you think? But the you thing think? is, I think in some states, mm. it, I, on, honestly, I, f I feel like in some states, because when I was in school, mm. I can't remember what year, but when I was in school, Akwa Ibom was really peaceful, right? That, that's one state you want to go to and travel mm. to, and it was really peaceful. But how dare you not pick Cross River? How dare you say Akwa Ibom? You know, I'm like say cross. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. nah, I, I don't know. You, I, I don't they give you eyes since. No, you're right about yeah, it. Yeah, bomb is very peaceful. peaceful. Mm. Yeah. So I think it really depends on the state. But right now, it's it has escalated, mm. right? But I think it depends on the state because mm. I know when I went to. Cross River? Better. That's not your Please subscribe to our channel. Uh -uh. Please subscribe. <laughs> you know, like, you, I was shocked because that was like the first place I saw that uh, the traffic lights were working. You know, you go and then you stop. I'm like, oh, wow. Things were really working in that state. Don't joke with so me. I know where I'm coming from. Like this. <laughs>
<laughs> this calabar, right? Mm -hmm. That was calabar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and so good. The greenish environment. So in the night, it was so beautiful. Like it was a very, very good thing to take in, considering how other states were at that point in time. Now, <laughs> so I didn't now, even know you were. You were. I, I, I'm, I'm across the variant. Don't play with me. Wow. That's a, Ghanians, you, do you not see that? <laughs> Why we love each other? <laughs> No, I feel like the tree planting culture yeah. also they have a lot of similarity with Ghana. Yeah. That um laid backness also is also there. True. True. So now you know why I'm true. I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you've been able to blend so well in Ghana. Yeah. My sister, they they blending right now, like trying to remove me from Ghana is like trying to remove it's, it's impossible. If you have to get married today, um, you know, back in, in Nigeria, the East, the East, um, you're supposed to go home to your father's house. So if mm -hmm. you are getting married today, where are you going? My father's house, my uncle's house. Here in Ghana? Yeah. So it's not even far. In case you are. <laughs> Strategy. Now the market is not. It's mostly we just send for mom and her family to come. Oh my god! Uh, me, I wanted to remain in Ghana for my, my your your dad, my late brother, my Ghanaian brother, because he was amazing. Yeah. So there are a lot of um now there are a lot of young Nigerians um and Ghanaians who have their parents just like you. Mm -hmm. Some of them their moms are Nigerians. Some of them their dads are Ghanaian. You no know, things like that. And they are, they are, they are right now, they are stuck in one place. They have a lot of questions in their heads, you know, like, they want to know what is in the other, what, what is in the other side. You know, they don't have this privilege that you have, this freedom that you have to freely um, connect mm -hmm. with your father's mm -hmm. family. So do you have any advice for them? Hey. So I would say it actually depends on the relationship they have with the side, right? Okay. So if, uh, take for instance, my mom was, my mom is Nigerian, mm. my dad is Ghanaian, but she doesn't have a good relationship. Or the things we heard were not mm. actually good about, I think that would discourage me, but I would want to see for myself. So there's no harm in taking risks, you know, come and see for yourself. If it is not what you want, I feel like, you, they should be grown to a point where they can make decisions for themselves. There's mm. no harm in taking risks. Ghana is very safe, right? But it depends on the family you are coming from. So if you come and see for yourself and that's not what you want, you have a choice to, to go, right? Mm. But you won't stay stuck in one side of the family forever. Mm. If you want to connect, you should go. Okay, so it, for those that have their Ghanaian parents, maybe it's in most cases your dad is Ghanaian mm -hmm. and your mom is Nigerian maybe your dad has passed on and uh, you don't really know if you should or shouldn't but you have a lot of questions in your head I think she's advising you to just come and visit yeah. get to see even if your dad is still alive right yeah, yeah, yeah. even if they are you've heard stories about your dad or something come and find out things to yourself yeah. I interviewed a lady here who her uh, own her dad left when she when she was young and then he came back again so during the period of um 10 years of him not being in her life no link no connection no nothing her mom had a lot to say about him now that's the problem uh -huh. mm. but then it didn't stop her from wanting to know that's very good and then when she got close it was amazing relationships can be funny maybe the mom and dad fell out and ended badly mm. right and that can affect her relationship but what where i feel like the mother might have gone wrong is talking badly about the mm. father or preventing no, it didn't say bad things it was just telling her her dad is late oh wow and then one day this man showed up he came prepared he's a fancy man you don't play with fancy <laughs> fancy fathers i don't oh. know they are very strategic yeah this man came back and he went to that house um, her mom hid her in a wardrobe uh -huh. the man no talk he go he came back again like he kept on coming like as many times he wanted to see his as child he, as he could he did not get tired until one day he came on away mm, at this point he just like he just came on away i think he has someone you know nigerians we are sell out mm. maybe I, I want to believe that there's a neighbor that is giving him information yeah so that day he came and he saw her he was you know he was really oh, nice. Well, that's really good. Mm. So, so, it means the father wants to connect. Yeah, she's a daddy girl up to now. Like, oh, that's sweet. Yeah, her dad, her dad came around when I was still living in the other apartments. Wow. I got to meet him. He stays in Nigeria up to date. 
sit there and say, oh, I heard that my dad is from Ghana. Yeah. Oh, how do I look for him? Try your best, okay? This social media era, ask questions and mm -hmm. all that, okay? Yeah. All right, so any other thing you want to say? Your YouTube channel, please, you guys, check her out for me, okay? Yes, check her out. You want to do YouTube. Um, are, you, are you working right now? Yeah, I do a nine to five. Yeah. You have a nine to five? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how are you going to combine that? It won't be a problem? No, it won't be a problem. I just have to manage my time well. Okay. Yeah. Is that you have plans to later become a full-time YouTuber? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Okay, you guys, please join, um, join her channel for me, okay? Subscribe to her channel, turn on the bell. And um, if you want to connect with her, I think they are... Um, on your channel you link your instagram yeah. handle people yeah. get to ask you questions yeah. and all that all right so thank you so much for coming on the channel thank you for having me um you guys don't forget to check her out okay she's our little sister <laughs> and don't say i didn't give you a wife okay i mean good <laughs> guys only please eh? <laughs> anyways thank you so much for coming coco yeah thank and you. Um, i hope um i see you again soon Okay, so tell my audience, bye bye. Tell them to subscribe. Yes, tell them subscribe again. to my channel. Thank you so much for having me. I'll see you hopefully next time. All right, bye. <laughs> bye. bye.